Hello and welcome to Gearock Farms. In today's video, we're gonna be putting up some electric fence up on Suicide Hill. We've been uh, fortunate enough to get some rains here midsummer, so now the grass is starting to grow. Well, it's time to fence that off so the dairy cows can start to graze it. Dad's getting the cordless drill ready right now because uh, we can imagine the ground's probably pretty hard yet, even with the rain. You have to beat up the, those little rod posts just to get them in, so to drill the hole. So, and then if it does start raining every day, we might have to go back and step them in a little deeper. Yeah. But that's only if. That's the plan for today. Hope you guys enjoy the video. We'll bring you along with fencing. Right now we're just getting all our tools ready to go. So we can head up there right away before it gets hot here. It's still uh, middle of the day. Nice summer day. Okay, we are all packed up and ready to go. Owen and Dad are with, so this should go fairly quicker, hopefully. Hopefully we can get it done in a short amount of time. here now Owen and dad are putting in posts dad's drilling and Owen's carrying the post I'm running the wire here so now while well, the camera picks it up but the smoke from the forest fires in Canada it's getting really bad around here, especially this weekend. We had a week there where we didn't really have a whole lot, but now it's back. Air quality is pretty low. I'd hate to see what it's like right by the fire. If it's this bad here, hundreds and hundreds of miles away. Let me know in the comments what it's like in your neck of the woods. Especially you guys that are further up north. There, I don't know how well the camera picks it up, but it is just a haze in the sky. Update, we are about halfway through the, the fence so far. If you guys have been uh, following the channel now for some time, you know that this field is named uh, Suicide Hill. Obviously the camera takes some of the slope away, but she's pretty steep. Every year we just harvest one crop of 
hay off of it first crop and then uh, we'll put a fence up like this and rotationally graze it midsummer grass for the dairy herd this year i'd say we're probably about a month behind putting this fence up just due to the lack of rain grass especially depends a lot on moisture in order to grow you can see the distinct line between the alfalfa stand and the grass and this alfalfa stand was just cut a week and a half two weeks ago and this has been at least a month by now it was looking brown there so if you've seen our crop tour looks a lot better than it did then so super happy that we got enough rain to help it green up and and grow in and personally i think it's probably going to be some really high quality grass due to that made it to our far corner now and we got to work our way up the hill and around our oats so we worked our way all the way from that bottom corner along the permanent fence here there's insulators on the top of the post just like this in order to get our electricity up to this corner so then we'll put a temporary fence along the oats and all the way over to that spot in between those trees there Since we're up here, we'll check on the oats and give you guys an update on those. They are looking beautiful. And we got some grasses now popping through and our alfalfa is in there too. It's looking great. Super satisfying to see that. And it's kind of nice that it was dry early on for the oats. They got established well enough and then the grasses didn't take them over before they could turn here. So now when we get a combine here, he shouldn't have as much trouble as last year. Last year we had a lot of grass in our oats. There's a lot of work for that combine, but this year it should be really nice. And they're all turning really well and they're not lodged up. Beautiful oats this year. Super grateful for how this crop turned out. We got the fence hooked up on this end. All there's left to do is turn the power on and make sure everything's good on that end which dad is headed over there to do that now. Man, is it windy. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Some more crop updates. This is that first planted corn that the turbo tiller did. And it's already tasseled. It's the first tasseled corn, I think, in our valley and of our personal corn, of course. Very happy with how that corn's looking. It's starting to develop a cob. Now if we keep getting some rains like we have been here late in the summer, cob should fill out really nice. That's our earliest plant stuff. Looks really good. I'll update you guys some more once we uh, move on to the next project. Next thing we gotta work on is we gotta go take the slack out of a, a fence we got using a, a tool that one of you sent us. So anyways, this is a little past due, this uh, clip, but we received a tool from a viewer about a year ago. One of you guys, thank you very much again. And dad, he's been using it a little here and there for the past year now, called the Texas Fence Fixer. 
I'm assuming that's Surge, where Surge in Texas. I'm assuming that's where it's made. I don't know. I stumbled across that on YouTube where somebody used it. I never even had a chance to even try it out until I seen that, and then I got excited about it. We should have had this 30 years ago, because we'd always have to cut the wire, then get a scrap piece and splice it in. Unless you had a splice in the fence nearby your sag or your loose part. Anyway. But this here. This is the real deal for it. So we're just going to illustrate here, even though we're close to the end of it, this is just some little stretch that's got some sagging wires. I always have a some scrap piece of wire that's, I don't like to take it off a new roll. I don't have to. So I got little spools like this strategically placed on this farm up in there so I don't have to take the wire with me always mm -hmm. so if you need to make a repair there's already wire so I'm thinking somewhere around I don't know two feet so you get your wire ready and you put that in there like that So you guys can just see now with that little bit how much tension that creates. I mean, it don't take much, but then you can, you can hook it to where you, you want to hook it. Okay, see, because I moved it over now, my little kink there isn't quite in the center, but you get the idea. Then we take our splice. four or five six times whatever I mean I imagine this is something obviously a farmer more or less invented it and somebody decided to start manufacturing them for official I probably used this 50 to 100 times already since then all over the place I was the kick it with yeah, by far, I'd say this is probably the most used item that one of you have sent us, for <laughs> sure. Well, it, it's just so practical for what we do anyway. Right? And by no means are we sponsored by this company or nothing. No. This was sent to us by one of you guys. I just think it's a neat thing. And, and what happens is, I've never seen this in our farm stores around here. Or had a chance to even try it or... I only know one other guy that, you know, talking to all the people I talk to in agriculture, I know only, only one other guy that has something like this locally here and again i think it, it's just having that connection from a area that does have them that um you were like hey send me one you know probably call back to where you came from say hey, send me one of those or something so that's pretty much it now just for just to add some tension to the fence that i think that's going to hold up pretty good i mean yeah, instead so of happens, having to splice and pull stuff apart, that's pretty so nice. What, so what really happens is the wires just, maybe the cows are picking on each other, they get bumped into it, and they end up stretching the wire over time. And maybe sometimes your brace posts and stuff give a little bit. This here I put up in the fall of 92. I remember it quite well because we had seven inches of rain the night before, and it was a dry summer. And then we, uh, I'm digging fence posts here the, the, the next several days after that. It was early September already. And the moisture only went down maybe 10 inches after 7 inches of rain overnight. I mean, it was just so hard and dry before it started. So. I always have those ways of remembering things. But anyway, that's a long time for a fence. And there again, we'll cut off a chunk. So we got three wires here and then netting under it. And the netting, I had used netting. There was actually a farm, it was just a few miles up the valley from where we are, I think some recreation guys owned and they and all the fence took out and some of the fence was pretty new. So back then my father-in-law, well, he's the one that got wind of that. He knew I needed fence, so that's where I got a lot of wire and some T posts and it, we just got them for taking it out, we got the material. So the wire was only in a few years before that. This reminded me too, do any of you know where we could find fencing players with really long handles? Is there a website or a certain manufacturer that sells them? Or is that some kind of custom? I seen with the Amish they had one that was like this long. I think this this business in here was all shaped the same, but it's just a little larger. Pretty much. And one more.
I mean, it's actually a pretty simple concept, really. That's what impresses me. Usually, to get something that works good, it always is overthought. And that seems like a lot of things in this world. We're thinking way past what we should. There was actually an article in that Farm and Ranch magazine years ago, and I think there was a guy in somewhere in one of those western states that his job was just to maintain fence. And you can imagine on those thousand acre ranches, all more level and flat, but still, it was a full time job just making sure the fence was where it belongs to the cattle didn't run off. Yeah, I think we're going to go this way. I would assume the tighter this is, and I could be doing this neater too, but for what we got going on here. Yeah, so you gotta stay on top of everything, because if you put it underneath, you won't be able to get this device out. Which I'm sure that it can happen, but that's how you learn. So you just eventually get the trick down. And... Anything's better than chasing cattle that gotten where they didn't belong. I would tinker with these fences all day every day before you end up with that deal. Now like the electric fence here, after the cows go up there a day, I'm going to have to go there and check it. Maybe the first three, four days, because you see how the deer run through there. They may not know it's there and bump it and break, you know, just knock a wire or two off. And the cows are respected at first. They got plenty of grass, but just preventing the problem. Now we didn't get them super tight because it's just some short stretch. If we make it too tight, eventually as the spring of the air, the posts just give a little bit. It is a good way to snug things up. Like I was saying, by far one of the coolest things we've got done so far. So big thank you to whoever did that. We're going to be using that. That Unless you lose it somewhere in the grass, it's going to be forever. Yeah, I don't that see why that. Wear out. Yeah, I wouldn't see why that would hold, wouldn't hold up. So. See, like the French stretchers, those ones that, you, you know, that we got here. I think I got like five or six of them already. Now this one they found on a garage sale. You, I know this came from like the 70s. But some of the newer ones aren't built as good. Some of them got an extra little cog right here to latch in too. But they wear out to the point where things get bent and these jaws get kind of messed up where they don't hold the wire right anymore. I mean, they're not made out of something real heavy. So yeah, you could kind of straighten them up and repair them. But the next thing you know, you got scars to show for that. I mean, that's, let's go. But this here is out of cast. You know, I know they can build them better. I know there's better stuff than this, but they just cost a fortune. In the comments down below, let us know what other kind of cool fencing tools you guys have found over the years. And uh, especially if you guys haven't seen it on our channel, we'd be interested to hear about it. Hear it and maybe a photo of it or something yeah, so we can the... see what, you know, because it's, sometimes it's hard to explain. But I can imagine there's plenty of tools we haven't discovered yet. So. So that is going to be it for the video. Thank you all for making it to the end. Thank you to anyone who's ever sent us mail. We really appreciate it. If you too would want to send us mail, we have a PO box down in the description. But by no means do we expect anything. It makes us happy just to see that you guys are watching and leaving comments telling us your story. That's what we enjoy the most. But anyways, that's going to be it. We'll uh, see you next time.